One of the kitchen assistants, Subha Lakshmi Amal, told me that Chinnaswami was used by Bhagavan like a washerman's stone to clear the devotees' dirt, their vasanas, and make them devote all their attention to spiritual sadhana. To fulfill this role, Chinnaswami perpetually earned a bad name. One devotee, Valarama Red Ayer, told me, Though there were defects in Chinnaswami's management, it is a fact witnessed by me repeatedly that Bhagavan always supported him. When I once complained to Bhagavan about Chinnaswami, he instantly corrected me, and I steadily stood by that correction all my life in the ashram. Bhagavan curtly asked me, Have you come all the way to sort out lapses in ashram management? Attend to the business for which you have come. Find out who from within raises these complaints. Leave the rest to the higher power. Be still. In 1973, Vishwanatha Swami was the editor of The Mountain Path, the Ashram Journal, and I was assisting him as its managing editor. I spoke to him about the iron side of Chinnaswami with great feeling. Vishwanatha Swami, on the other hand, quickly turned my attention to the soft rose petal side of Chinnaswami by pointing out, It is easy to stand in judgment of others, but who judges whom? A mind judges the play of another mind. This awoke in me a great reverence for Chinnaswami and for everyone in the world, because when you look at people as I am, there is no question of praise or blame. Vishwanatha Swami continued to talking to me and said, Ganesan, Chinna Swami was one of the biggest boulders that rolled down from the holy hill to give support to our Satguru Bhagavan. It is entirely due to his hand work and diligence that our dear Bhagavan was physically made available to us at a fixed place 24 hours a day. Undisturbed, we all got Hridaya Vidya, the truth of the heart in Bhagavan's presence and straight from Bhagavan himself. In the old hall, we experienced Bhagavan showering on us the truth, the wisdom of the heart, day and night. How could it have been possible without a strong base, a material center, and an institution like the ashram? Naturally, running an institution needed a strong, iron-willed man like Chinnaswami to manage it all the 24 hours. Because of this, Bhagavan could sit silently, permitting both the horizontal and vertical expansion to take place simultaneously. Horizontal expansion includes establishment of the ashram as an institution, its daily management, the printing books, the serving of food to the devotees who flock to be with Bhagavan, and other outward activities. At the same time, the much more important step of emphasizing vertical expansion, the need for one's own inner spiritual growth, had to be imparted to. This includes imbibing the Guru's grace in his presence, self-inquiry, self-attention, meditation, ascetic and reclusive living. The horizontal aspect includes multitudes of people and multifarious activities. The vertical aspect emphasizes only the individual, the inward experience of the truth in oneself. Bhagavan created an atmosphere for both the horizontal and vertical expansion to take deep roots in the ashram that was painstakingly raised by Chinnaswami. In this divine play of Aranachala, 
Chinna Swami played a very vital role. Hence, Bhagavan gave him continued support in the affairs of the management. At the same time, Bhagavan guided each of us in our inward spiritual sadhana. Whether we lived in Palakotu, the sadhu community, or inside the ashram, and that's not including all the other devotees worldwide who were not in his physical presence. This gave me the clarity that as seekers we should remain in the awareness that we are all in the reverential presence of the truth, not just for one hour in the morning and evening while in meditation or inquiry, but every moment of the day. Call it Bhagavan or Aranachala, it does not matter by which name you call it. And we must also feel grateful to those who made this truth available to us. Not only Chinnaswami, but devotees like Devaraja Mulayer, Anamalai Swami, Vishwanatha Swami, Narasimha Swami, Marunganar, Paul Brunton, and many others. Between 1922 and 1940, who formed important links in the ashram's horizontal expansion. Yet, it is also true that for each one of these devotees, the vertical expansion of attaining self realization was equally bestowed by Sri Bhagavan. The horizontal and vertical expansions have to happen together. As Marunganar once said, this is done like a train running on two rails. <laughs>